Okay, in today's video, I'm going over how to go from the molecular formula of a compound to the empirical formula. And before we actually go through and do that, I'm just going to go through and review really quick. Here's a little review. The empirical formula, you should remember, shows you the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in the compound, and the molecular formula shows you the actual whole number ratio. So the empirical formula is always the lowest ratio. Okay, and you can see here we have some four compounds. All four of these are molecular formulas, and for each of these, we're going to go to the empirical formula. Okay, and the way we do that is we're simply going to reduce, I just think of it as reducing the chemical formula, reducing the molecular formula to its lowest ratio. So we want to just look at all the subscripts we have here, and we want to see if they can be reduced. And you see we have H2O2, this is hydrogen peroxide, that's the molecular formula. Well, the lowest ratio, H2O2, is the actual formula for hydrogen peroxide, but the lowest ratio, of course, because 2 and 2 are do both divisible by 2, is the lowest ratio is just going to be HO. So the empirical formula for hydrogen peroxide is just HO. Okay, now here we have uh, C6H6. This is benzene, and um, we once again we have both our 6 and 6, so they can be both divisible by 6 and 6, and therefore we have the empirical formula for benzene is just CH. Okay, so that's the empirical formula. All right, now here we have one that's a little more complicated. This is caffeine, but you can see we have all even numbers here, 8, 10, 4, and 2, so we can reduce each of those is divisible by 2, so the empirical formula for caffeine is C4 H5 and 2 O. Okay, that is simply the empirical formula for caffeine. Okay, now we have the last one here is ribose. Ribose is a simple sugar, a monosaccharide, and you can see we have 5, 10, and 5, and of course 5, 10, and 5 are both divisible, or all three of those are divisible by 5, so the empirical formula for ribose is just simply C H 2 O. Okay, so those are the, uh, the empirical formulas for those compounds, and let's go through and do some others and see what else we can figure out. Here um, we have some more. These are all, once again, molecular formulas. We have uh, formaldehyde, acetic acid, and glucose. And you can see that this is uh, the molecular formula for formaldehyde. Now you'll notice that this is CH2O, and obviously it's C1H2O1, and that is not reducible. So that cannot be reduced to a lower ratio. So in this case, it's interesting to note that the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same. So this is just going to be C H2O, because those are not reducible. Okay, now let's look at the next one. We have C2H4O2, and again, this is acetic acid. All three of these are divisible by two. So once again, we're going to have the empirical formula is going to be C H two oh all right and we can divide each of these the lowest ratio for uh, sucre, uh, excuse me for glucose here with this is six twelve and six so these can also be reduced uh, each of those numbers is divisible by six so we're going to come up with if you haven't noticed the same empirical formula so this is just interesting to note that we have three different compounds three different molecular formulas but all three of these compounds have the same empirical formula CH2O. So the lowest ratio is one carbon, two hydrogens, to one oxygen. Okay? Just that in the molecular formula they appear in uh, different ratios. All right? So let's go through. I think we can do one more page. And let's just see if we can answer these questions really quick. Uh, we have here, it says, uh, which the following can be classified as an empirical formula? So it says which of them are empirical formulas. Now, empirical formula means it has to be the lowest whole number ratio. You can see we have S2 and Cl2, so let's just see if that's an actual empirical formula, and you should notice that if we were to write the empirical formula, it would just be SCl, so that's not an empirical formula. This is a molecular formula. This would be the empirical formula. Once again, here we have 6, 10, and 4, and all of those are divisible by 2. Yes, so all those are divisible by 2, and so we're going to have C3, H5, and O2. So once again, this is an empirical, this, excuse me, this is a molecular formula, this is an empirical formula. 
So one here we have the last one, sodium sulfate. You notice we have a two and a three, and those are not divisible, or not cannot be, they're not divisible by any single number, and or we still have whole numbers, and so that is already at its lowest ratio. So this one is already an empirical formula. So you'll notice that the molecular formula and the empirical formula, once again, are the same. And that tells you that this formula over here is the empirical formula, or if it's the molecular formula, then the empirical formula and the molecular formula are the same. So this is the only one, the sodium sulfate, that can be classified as an empirical formula. Okay? So I think that's pretty straightforward. Just reduce, kind of like you reduce fractions. And thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you next time.